Welcome to the Ausgel Podcast, where we bring the gel ball community together. Each week, we have a special guest where we talk about what's new in the world of gel ball, be it mill sims, speed ball, and everything in between. Now, welcome to our host. Hi, I'm Dan from Ausgel. I'm Gary from Donnybrook Gel Ballers. And today, I'm joined by a longtime gel ball enthusiast and the man behind the Donnybrook store. All right, Gary, firstly, mate, thanks very much for joining us. You've been around the industry for a while now, well before even I entered the mix. Um, tell us about your background and the journey that led you into the gel ball industry. How long we got? Okay, yeah, uh, let's let's keep it to about five hours. Okay. Okay. Right, I can do that. Yeah. Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, mate, um, I'm, I'm sort of here for Dave and Christy. Yep. But... Uh, hey Dave, is, hey Christy. Yeah, yeah. Hey Dave, hey Christy. Um, I about five years ago, um, when there was even no gel ball or reta- retail gel ball retailers in Queensland, I yep. bought a um, blaster off Armored Heaven, and um, from New South Wales. Anyway, I got it home uh, and shooting tin cans in the dog, uh, not the dog. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Let's yeah, yeah, we'll cut that one yeah, out, eh? That was a, yeah, yeah. that was a joke. That, yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought, oh, this is a bit boring. So I was thinking about starting my own field. To tell you the truth, yeah. you get get others involved because I yeah. like I, I'm a team player. Yep. Um, anyway, I just started looking around, and I was thinking of approaching the uh, local um, paintballers up here. Yep. And just up on Facebook comes Donnybrook. Yeah. And they'd only run one week. Yep. So I arrived there on the second week uh, to play gel ball. And I'm pretty sure it was with a B1 Vector. Ah, nice. Top top fed Vector. Yeah. Old 7.4 volt Vector, yep. And there were no mag feds those days. So we were running around shooting, you know, at 15. Oh, it had a hopper on the top. Not the B1 Vector, it didn't. You slide back, put gels in it. Oh wow! Yeah, there the you B1. go. <laughs> yeah. Far out. Uh, young charm age. Jeez, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and we were running around shooting fifteen meters, to twenty meters. <laughs> yeah, different to now, um, but still having fun. Yeah. Um, and I, my background is RC. Yep. Uh, and I knew a lot about batteries and the guys that didn't. Know RC a lot. being like remote control cars. Yeah, that's yep. it. Yeah, okay. re- remote control, radio yep. control. Um, and I saw the guys there didn't. Um, so I decided to help them out and through that get buy quality batteries. For a while yep. there I was called the battery man. Ah. Uh, yeah. So I, st- and to speed it right up, because we're here for Donnybrook, yep. but uh, I started from the back of my van on two tables. Yeah. Driving there every day, back and forth, um, loading up and unloading, uh, selling out of there and mainly batteries and a few other bits and pieces. Sure. But then I got into blasters because um, Dave Dave said, um, we need to sell and we need to hire blasters here. That, yep. Oh, what, what I've left out is a bit of a funny story, how yeah. I met Dave. Um, I was playing. Anyway, there's these two people standing there, but this big guy yep. and this shorter woman standing there and throwing orders because someone else was managing it for a little while in the beginning. Sure. Um, and I thought, who were these people? You know, and they're behind a fence. Yep. And it was Dave and Christie. Ah. And this other guy left and uh, he took over. Um, Dave saw the potential in this because Dave had a background in uh, paintball and uh, laser tag. Yep. Um, and so it progressed from there and Dave said to me, we need to get higher blasters and, and to sell them. So I, I did that. Yep. So I went from the back of my van to... Uh, an area not much bigger than these two tables here. Yep. And then in where the reception is now, uh, and then much later on, uh, actually it would be 18 months ago now because we um, actually built the shop uh, when COVID hit Um, and into there. Nice. So that's the basic story of the shop. Yeah. Um, The only thing I'll add in, I, I had to work. But it, it just snowballed, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, the place we're in here, it just 
just snowballed along. Um, uh, the, the media helped us, uh, whether it was negative or positive feedback. <laughs> yeah. As soon as there was a media report, whether it was good or bad, down they'd come. Uh, yeah, and, and it kept it alive, didn't it? Because every yeah. time there was something in the media, especially if it was negative, negative was even better back at the start uh, it because was. it would get all the passionate gel ballers talking on social media and jumping on all the news channels. And because yeah. there were so many people talking about it, you had all these punters who were watching the news and yeah. seeing these comments going, hey, what what are these guys on about? What, what are these yeah. gel blaster things? So we ended up, um, they ended up helping the industry, didn't it? It did. Well, yeah. we'll go down and have a look. Exactly. Um, that that's as far as the shop. Yeah. You know? and, and boy, has it been a ride. Uh, along yeah, I'd the imagine. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Up, ups and downs. Oh, there you go. Well, um, <coughs> I, I do believe that Donnybrook was the first gel ball field to open in Queensland. T- tell me what it was like back at the beginning operating a gel ball well, field. As far as we know, it was the first in Australia. Yeah. As far as we know, mm. um, there was nothing up here because there was no retailers. Yeah. Um, or anything like that. Yeah, there could have been some backyard or something. Like and and what was it like running the games back then? Like, was it was it a smaller crowd or what oh, was it like? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, sometimes we played. It, it was a tighter group. You know, it was yeah. nearly just all friends. Everyone knew everyone. Yeah. But, uh, we'd just have tens. Yeah. Twenties and thirty was a big yep. day. Uh, amazing. Yeah. And then Dave kept saying, we've got to get bigger. Well, we, we, you know, he'd... He'd worry a bit about it, but that that's fine. And yeah. I remember there was that um, big Milsim event. I think it was in 2019 sometime. And uh, it was the one where Grant um, Grant had come in to run oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. were like, oh, geez, uh, there were hundreds there. Yeah. It was absolutely nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the biggest we ever had was a fundraiser that was over 300. Wow. Yeah. That's just crazy. COVID good, killed that, good, though, though. Yeah. in the numbers. Yeah. That is really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, what are the kind of players that you get out at Donnybrook? It's evolved over the years. As I say, it was a different crowd. Um, yeah. It was sort of, oh, I hesitate to call them hardcore, but just people that wanted to have fun. Yeah. But they were serious about it. Yeah. Um, Dave's always gone family orientated. Yep. So probably to a certain extent, that's probably driven a few away. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the hardcore is, you know, yep. to other places. Um, that want high FPS, yeah, uh, and things like that. Um, but he's always looked at family, mm. and and it's it's shown us in his c- yep. success that yeah. um, it, he has decided to go that way. But we still get the regulars. We we got the hard and fast regulars rusted yeah. on. You know, they they'll go and look at a, a new field, um, yeah. especially the new CQVs or whatever you want to. But call they treat Donny Brook as the home. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. It's good that you've got your, your own player base there. Yeah. Now, um, what are your thoughts on the transition of Gel Blaster tech over the years where we've gone from like a Gen 8 to the current V2 gearboxes, you know, where the trolley switches were introduced? Well, going on with what I said before about yeah. turning up with a V1 Vector. Yeah. My attitude, mate, is... Uh, see, I, even though I'm a retailer, yeah. I'm not a bells and whistle person. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, ha- I have a bit of cosplay that I do, mainly black. Yep. Um, but other than that, I just want my blaster to shoot distance and direct yep. as possible. Um, and I don't care really whether it's nylon, metal, or whatever. Yep. That's that's me. Yeah. I understand other people. I'm sort of getting off the track a bit. No, no, you're right. The end of it. But that's, I'm just letting you know where I come from. Yeah. Um, as far as what's inside, Gen 8, V2, V3, V63. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. As long as it works. That's it. That's yeah, what it comes down yeah, to, yeah, isn't yeah, it? That's I mean, right. You, you can pick yeah. up a blaster that's V2 and it's don't work real well, or the V3 that yep. does and vice versa. And, and there's still yeah. people out there that use the uh, old Gen 8 boxes, um, which is based yeah. off like a, a, a pseudo airsoft V3, but um, the the Gen Eight just seems to be the the old workhorse that yeah. just keeps going. Well, why and going. is it still there? Exactly because it's reliable. Yeah, it's that's simply it. that. Yeah. yeah, I've got a Gen Nine. Ah, nice. Yep. Um, but level one mod. Yeah. No fantastic. metal gears. Yeah. Anything, and I'll go in any disc competition you like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got some other. I've got an ARP Nine. 
and and, yeah. and, and I've got an old uh, sitting there on number three. Yep. An old um, uh, M4A1. Nice. A. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good I'm stuff. N- I'm not sure if it's ABS or nylon. I haven't looked at it yeah. for a while. <laughs> Yeah, definitely the materials have changed over the years, no yeah. doubt about that. But um, t- tell us about how the Donnybrook field has changed over the years. Oh, I wish Dave was here. Um, that's his uh, department. But I'm sure Dave will be watching you like yeah, a hawk right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best. Well, when I first arrived, yep. they had inflatable barriers. To just, which, really? Which, which you, well, which you see in some of your CQBs, yeah. um, covered areas. Yeah. But... Um, that's what was there. There wasn't much wow. at all. Uh, and it's just evolved into just about... He's utilised pretty much most of the property, which is 50 acres. Yeah. Um, and I keep thinking the way he's going, building barriers and buildings and towers, you won't be able mm. to go anywhere where there's not a barrier. Yeah. That's the way he's going. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, it's hard to say. It's just evolved gradually. Um and Dave doesn't have any grand plan that I know mm. of. He he does it as people mention things. Oh, that'd be yeah. a good idea, Dave. You know, and he thinks yep. about it, and then either go, doesn't go ahead with it or, or does it. Yeah, you know? uh, he wants to please the people. Contrary sometimes to popular belief, he he is there for the players. Um, now, yeah. Speaking of which, you know, and look, <laughs> I I do acknowledge, you know. Being one of the older fields, there's always been controversy on and off. You get that across the entire industry. Mm. But one thing that I think a lot of players can agree upon is it's one of those fields where, you know, that the field itself just has so much diversity. One, one of the things I previously enjoyed about playing in that field was the path that goes around the dam out the back to the left. Mm. Um you know, there's, there's a path that you wander along there. And I remember the first time I went out there, people were setting up ambushes on that path. Um, you know, some people would want to just walk the path for, you know, just so they can, you know, get into that little firefight with people that set up an ambush yeah. or you'd have people trying to flank and going all the way around the back of the field and come back in. And then you've got that, you've got an open space with, um, you know, wooden bunkers everywhere. Then, um, you know, th- there's just so many variations. And that's one of the things I like about yeah. uh, the field. But half the time, I don't know what's there. Yeah. Because because of the shop and because of the COVID de- turn down um, yep. or, or the dro- lockdowns and so on and so forth, Yeah. Um, as you were saying, we walked in, things have quieted down a bit. So I don't have the staff like I used to have. So I get stuck in the shop a lot. Yeah. So I don't get out there and Dave doesn't always tell me what's going on. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dave. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so yep. because it's just the other week, I looked out in the field, like, what's that? Yeah. Oh, and the guy says, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. oh God. You know, I'll have to play more somehow. But, yeah, um, yeah it's just it, when you're there all the time, mm. you, you just sort of nearly take it for granted. But uh, it, it, as you say, it's the yeah. most diverse field. And you can play anything there from uh, a short field game yep. um, to a, a milsom. Yeah. Anything. And, and, like uh, even a on the spot milsom where yep. you haven't had a look, put a lot of thought on it. Yeah, probably the only thing we don't have is a covered area. So um, people, there's always time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. it. All right, cool. Um, now, important question here: Who would win in a one v one between David and Christy? Sorry, repeat the question. <laughs> 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 no, it's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, uh, physical or verbal? Gel blaster. <laughs> yeah, oh, gel yeah, blaster. not a cage fight. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. When I when I read this question, I thought there was something else. Yeah. I'd go for Christy if it was a cage fight. By the way, yeah. Just well, for the record. That. Um, I think that's the smart way for me to go. Right? Yeah, and that's Dave it. won't mind. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah. He, he'll smile and nod. Yeah. I'm sure. Christy yeah. always wins. Yeah, whatever it is. Excellent. Physical I like it. There you go. Yeah. So you heard that first here, folks. Christy <laughs> always wins. Yeah, good move, mate. All right, now, your favourite gel blaster. What is it? Um, well, people walk in my shop and say, what's the most reliable? I, I have to yep. say the Gen 9. Gen 9? Yeah, yeah I nice. just have to. And I get yep. that backed up by a lot of techs. Yeah. Sorry, guys, that like metal and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. But I have to say the Gen 9 because it's reliable. 
But that's what I'm looking for, reliability. Yeah. And um, you don't have to do much for it to get it to perform. Good stuff. Um, anything else? As I say, I'm a, I'm a little bit different for a retailer. Mm. Uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm a player. Yep. Yeah. So I'm talking from a functional sense, uh, but I'm trying to think of something I go, wow, I like, I like the ARs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they've uh, they got enough nylon in them to give them a bit of weight. A lot of people think they're metal first up. So mm. um, I like, um, as a short arm, I like the AR, AR. Oh, ARP? ARP9? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ARP9. Yeah, nice. yeah. 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 They are a great blast. That's yeah. actually what I personally run. Yeah. I run an ARP9 that mm. is not modified at all internally. It's just got to hop up on the end. Yeah. Performs flawlessly. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. good. Yeah, they got a few uh, internal stuff. problems. You got to fix first off, but other yeah. than that, they're great. Yeah. Good to go. Excellent. All right, now, um, how's the COVID situation affecting business for you guys out there at Donnybrook? Uh, um, as I say, mate. Um, yeah. Before COVID, yep. we, we um, when COVID hit, that's when we decided yep. to do the full on shop. Um, yeah. And um, it just happened, but. Um, um, at that stage, just before that, I was thinking of standing back a bit, yep. putting staff in, and think, what am I going to do from here? Am I yep. going to move out? Um, going to do something else? Talk to Dave. You know, what do we do? Yeah. Um, uh, but then, when the shop was built and COVID, the first big lockdown hit, hmm. down she went. There was it yep. was like this, but it's gone up and down, and then just sort of plateaued with a few bumps. Yeah. So. And I'm hearing it around the place too. It's yep. all the same. It's had its it's had its effect. Yeah. Um, on people. Well, hopefully, uh, as as a state, we we can at least get this under control by the end of the year. That'd be really nice, I think. So. Um, who, who knows? Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. If only we had the crystal ball, right? Oh, you don't know yeah. with this thing. Um, oh, geez. Getting worse and worse. Well, look, all of that aside, though, yeah. let's say things get better. What's in store for the future of Donnybrook? Can you tell us any secrets? Are you no, allowed to well, tell us any secrets? Dave doesn't tell me, so how can I tell you? Can you speculate? <laughs> <laughs> As I said before, yep. Dave's always thinking, well, know, what can I do? And I want to keep the players happy, so what can I do? But yep. he, he never does it really yeah. long term, which, which I think is smart. I'm a bit yep. like that too because – to, to be quite honest with you, I'm stuck with some stock there that yep. I'm probably never going to sell because it's all <laughs> it's yep. old news. So it's best not to look too f- long term with it mm. um, because you don't know what people are going to want. Um, my con- real concern about the future, the, the future of gel bo- uh, Donnybrook is connected to gel ball, of course. Yep. That's, that's just probably a simple statement. Sure. But um, it's connected to our authorities. Yep. We know what's happening in the other states. Yeah. Um, we're sa- safe in here in Queensland, but that's only as long as we have the yep. present government and there's a, the, and there's a change and they can change it's, their mind. It's a good point that you, you raised there. And uh, yeah. one thing I should say to the people out there is um, if you are concerned about that sort of thing, don't worry. There is stuff happening in the background and there are people fighting the good mm. fight. So, yeah, that. um, and that's, that's why I'll always say to the players out there, you know, I mean, I remember once upon a time, a, a lot of gel ballers out there used to say, don't trust the retailers. You know, they're only in it for themselves. Trust the community. We need a gel ball. But the reality is the retailers probably have more to lose. They have their mm. livelihoods to lose. So the people who are going to fight right. for it harder than anyone else is going to be the retailers. Mm. And I can tell you right now, as long as you're supporting the retailers, Believe you me, the retailers are doing a lot of work in the background. So yeah, 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 yeah I know. And that's that's the big thing to remember. So support yeah. your fields, support your retailers. As long as there's still a hobby out there, then there's still people to defend the sport. That, that's right. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, um, Gary, mate, again, thank you so much for joining us. It's greatly okay, appreciated. Yeah. Greatly appreciated. Now, um, can you please tell our viewers and listeners how they can find out more about you and the Donnybrook store? Well, um, Donnybrook's easy. They mainly work on Facebook. 
Yep. Yeah. So if you want to find anything out, you just go to Facebook and put in Donnybrook Gel Ballers Queensland. So that's D O double N Y B R double O K. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Gel Ballers Queensland. Okay. Um, as far as this, I I have my own page. So that's just uh, Donnybrook Gel Ballers Sales and Mod Shop. I don't really like that that much, but I inherited it um, because I don't do mods myself. But um, yeah, so it's just simple. We mainly work off Facebook. There is a website for um, the the field, but it's yeah, it's oh, not that's all right. That. Yeah, all right. and there's a web page for the the shop, but I don't push it a lot uh, for certain reasons. But, oh, um, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, mate. And uh, guys, as always, I'm Dan from Ausgel. You can find Ausgel at www.ausgel.com.au across all the socials as Ausgel and on Instagram at Ausgel Ammo. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. It means a lot to us. If you enjoyed today's podcast, leave a comment or review below and hit the follow or subscribe button. If you have any questions or want to be part of a future episode or even want to know more about Ausgel, head to ausgel.com.au to get in touch.